I am holding these wine bottles because I think you need to be in the right frame of mind when you are discussing emerging technologies. <laughs> so let's start with a <clears throat> couple of questions. And these wine bottles are for those people who give the right answers. And the first question is, when did the first wedding take place in virtual reality? And I'll give you a hint. And there's a second part of the question, and which is, was the kiss real or virtual? <laughs> now, if you answer only one part, you have to give me a wine bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so now, folks, come on. I'll give you a hint. It was in 2017. I'll also give you a hint that the couple was from UK and the wedding took place in USA. <laughs> Last question. Again, another hint, please. The wedding was in the month of May. Come on, guys, quickly. 21st. Huh? 21st? Yeah. Higher. 28th. 28th? Lower. 26th. 25th. 26th? Lower. 25th. You still have, now you owe me a bottle of wine. <laughs> now tell me, uh, was the kiss real or virtual? Real. I'll see you with a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, hi, I'm Alana Kishore Chakasti, uh, and I'm a consultant with digital. And she's also the former head of uh, digital uh, whatever, whatever at Wipro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the kiss was real. The wedding was an official wedding. Now the question is, how did the virtual wedding take place? They had mm -hmm. their avatars who are getting married in a virtual domain. Now, there's a second bottle of wine. There are four industries which are today leading in the take up of VR AR. I'll tell you which is number one. Pornography. <laughs> it's got a pretty high take up, by the way. The, the first industry which is leading is gaming and entertainment with 75% of the companies in that domain showing an intent of going into VR here. The, the lowest is health. And that is, and that is 75% was gaming and entertainment. Health is at 14%. Number two is education and training at 25%. The question is, which was number three? Retail. Retail, you said? Yes. Real estate. Real estate. Real estate. So it doesn't have to be a sector. It can be a function also. And it is something that relates to a lot of people in this room. Marketing. No. 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 Who said that? You are close enough. It is actually industrial design. At 18% today is the number three a function or theme which is going into ARPR. So please come forward and take your bottle of wine before I drink it, you know. <laughs> so this is what tells you what the current state of play is. It's not that there are not issues with VR, AR, what is VR, AR in the first place, you know? And I'll give you an analogy. If you go through education and training, at one hand, you have face-to-face -face education and training. That is, you attend classrooms, you know, there is somebody standing in front of you who's teaching. On the other hand, you've got online training where you are immersed by yourself, maybe immersed virtually, in an environment with a couple of other people. The same thing applies for virtual reality, augmented reality. On one hand, you've got the real people, you and me. On the other hand, you've got a totally virtual environment, which is unreal. And when you move in between the two is when you get what is called mixed reality. In the education and training space, it is called blended learning. When you are mixing real objects with virtual objects. Now, you will come across terminology like augmented reality or augmented virtuality. Don't get lost within those. All that means is that you're increasing the level of virtual elements into the space 
as you go from rail to rail. Now, mm. another thing, you'll also hear a lot about HTC Vive, Samsung Gear VR, and all that kind of a thing, you know. Again, don't get lost. For seeing something in a virtual environment, which is not at the resolution of the eye, you need a head-mounted device, which is what this geeky kind of stuff that you're seeing all across over here is. It's just that you get different combinations of price versus experience. So the highest end is by a company called HTC, and the head-mounted device is called HTC Vive, and that costs about $800, but it also needs a PC to work with it, which is about $1,200. So leading to a cost of about $2,000 for experience in virtual reality. At the lowest end actually is Google Cardboard. The kind of stuff which the first gentleman talked about, which today in places like India can be obtained for about 50 cents. So that, but that experience is not at all very good. But the game changer was Samsung Gear VR, which is really, they came out with a head mounted device priced at 100 US dollars last year. Now, that gives you an experience on your using your mobile as a processor, <clears throat> and that was the game changer insofar as VR is concerned. Now, I don't have another bottle of wine, but the question is that last year in 2016, 8.2 million head-mounted devices were ship shipped. Guess how many were Samsung Gear VR? 80%. 80? I have, I have lost maths. I don't know how maths. What does the number mean? Uh, 8 into 8 is 6.4, by the way. Mm? It's lower than that. 200,000? Hmm? More than that. OK, so in the sake of time, 5 million gear VR headsets were shipped in 2016, out of 8.2 million. The second highest was Sony PlayStation with 1, uh, one million. So you can understand where the market is heading towards. <coughs> Likewise, when you look at augmented reality, it is, let's take, let's go to an IKEA store. You want to buy a couple of flower vases. And what happens is that you've got a table over here, and you're wanting to choose that whether I put flower vase number A or flower vase number B. So you can actually put those digital objects on top of a real table and see how does it look like. That's an example of augmented reality. Now, who is in augmented reality at the moment? Microsoft HoloLens. And who is coming out as the biggest game changer is Apple. Apple have launched AR Kit, which is going to be a big game changer insofar as um, AR is concerned. Fast forward three years from now, last year Pokemon Go gave a big impetus to AR but major work at the moment is in virtual reality. Fast forward three years, 75% of the market is forecast to be in mobile AR. Now, I've taken more than my share of time, but I have to do a bit of a marketing spiel and say that, look, as the Sydney mm -hmm. chapter president for Global Virtual Reality, Augmented Reality Association, as well as the Global Co-Chair for Education, we have got now 16 chapters of communities that we are building at the moment. And we're building a huge community of people and we are not necessarily focusing on techos. We want people from the business background. Who guess who's heading our product management committee to the practice? None and then this lady over here who was jumping around in the chair, you know, and I've got a photograph of that now. Adrian Tan. <laughs> and I invite all of you and I'm offering a discount of 10% mm -hmm. if you join in a week's time. And I will send please feel free to contact Adrian or me. And we want to build up a huge community, man. I was in Vietnam, I was in Malaysia and India just a couple of months back. We are building a huge community globally. I'm in touch with more than 300 companies now, institutions, who in and around Sydney alone, who are focusing on this. Leave aside Perth, Melbourne, and other parts of the world that we are involved in. Thank you very much. Thank you.